Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Startup Central. I'm Avan Dabash. Lots lined up today on the show. My guest joining me on the show today is none other than who is described as the world's fastest human calculator and that is Neelkant Bhanu Prakash who is the founder and CEO at Banzu who is, which is the company that's currently in the spotlight for their latest fundraise close to 15 million dollars in a series A round. I'm going to admit that uh, math is not my strong point but I know that that's really the reason that you set up the company to you know completely make people uh, get rid of that uh, sort of roadblock in their heads about math and making math fun so before I come to the fundraise let's talk a little bit about how you really plan to do this with the company so uh, Banzo is a math education company which I have founded after becoming the world's fastest human calculator seeing a few things one is that students across the world have a trouble understanding mathematics because of the way it is taught so always wanted to let's say work towards building uh, a math education entity which has the ability to inspire millions of students into taking up mathematics and also falling in love with it. So started out Banzu where we started doing online live classes for students across the world, learning from my understandings of becoming the fastest human calculator, established uh, the startup and today it's a global math learning platform, started in 2020 and uh, have come a long way and with the vision of building a math platform that revolutionizes the way students learn math to build a better world by making the math confident and uh, that's what that's what we do here Okay, fair enough. Now let's just talk about uh, the latest fundraise round as well. It's close to $15 million that the company has raised in a Series A round by Eighth Roads Ventures as well as B Capital who've invested from the Ascent Fund. Uh, just walk us through what exactly this fundraise means for the company. What are the proceeds going to be utilized toward? So uh, we raised our first round of capital a year ago where uh, what started out with, let's say, five, six people and an initiative which was just working in public sector projects to commercially scale across geographies. In the last one year or so, we have added more than 30,000 students who have been part of the Banzu learning ecosystem. And we've launched multiple geographies where we, being in India, are providing mathematical math education services for people in Southeast Asia and Middle East Asia. Uh, having seen that trajectory of growing from uh, almost growing almost 20x in the last eight months or so, we've seen a phenomenal growth. And in the time where edtech is usually fairly not not doing as well, um, this capital, this round of capital, means a lot of validation towards us believing that Banzu has the right to win and become one of the most celebrated math education startups across the world and become the biggest math education company. I think this sort of uh, validates our hypothesis of becoming that and the proceeds of this funding will be utilized towards scaling our tech and product teams, scaling multi-geography, moving to the West, expanding across multiple geographies and building better student experiences to bring us one step closer towards what our vision is, which is to build mathematics and curriculum in such a way where we believe that every student is capable of learning and loving mathematics to actually make that the, the truth. And I think that's that's where we'd be utilizing the majority of our funds into scaling the right teams and making sure that uh, education and the educational outcomes are way ahead than just doing sales and revenue. And that's what we as Banzu uh, are trying to optimize for post this fundraise. You know, if I may, I just wanted to get in your thoughts being one of... Uh, the players in this edtech space, you had um, Think and Learn, which is of course the parent company of the edtech major Baiju's, and they saw losses jumping to about 4,500 odd crore rupees. Uh, that was a mammoth jump from the 232 crores in the previous year, and uh, that's largely attributed to the change in uh, you know accounting of revenues. And uh, I just want to understand, given that you know a lot of these edtech companies. Um, have uh, you know resorted to upfront revenue re recognition on a long-term contract? What would be your outlook on what this really means for the sector as a whole? Has it tainted the image to a certain extent? Um, can say that, but uh, I mean, coming from someone who's let's say looked at edtech very closely and building one, I think there's always give and take. I think in the times where 
uh, there is a challenge. You actually have better consolidation players coming in. So I would probably say that attack, the first wave of attacks which have been built, have been built on very strong foundations of catering towards school education. But I think working towards uh, building sustainable businesses is the way to go. Banzu, the recognition, what we've gotten and the kind of scale at which we are pulling this off has been possible because of uh, being able to, let's say, add students because of its value, but not just by push sale. I think that's something which changes and brings a slightly different perspective towards what education has been in India. While I think uh, India has been the land of edtechs, there is a long way to go before we call uh, ourselves to be a place where we have consolidated big businesses. So... Uh, I would not say tainted. Tainted is a very aggressive word. I think there is a slight amount of plateauing when it comes to, let's say, what ethics takes, will make it big and what won't. And I think we are right there at the right time because uh, we believe that we are optimizing for the right metrics. And uh, hopefully down the line, be, be celebrated as one of those uh, ed techs which has not taken just the growth part, but actually has humanized learning to a large degree. Okay, no, I get that, but um, what about for Banzu itself? I understand you're yet to disclose your FY22 numbers and, you know, in pre-revenue stage um, for the fiscal year ending uh, uh, 21 is what uh, the company was in. And according to the financial statements, what is the operating revenue and what kind of profit does the company enjoy? If you can share some details. So, uh, the... The financial year 21 was when we just started off. So we were like a five month old company. So I think obviously would not have a lot to speak. We have grown aggressively and very well in the last nine to 10 months as an entity. Uh, I think uh, probably to disclose a few numbers, uh, starting all the way from at least doing 10 and doing, let's say 15, 20 lakh rupees of revenue every month, we have scaled to at least 30 times it in the last in the last uh, six to eight months. And I think we are sitting at around four, four and a half CR of, of, of bookings as we go. But uh, but I think that doesn't speak a lot about our business yet because I think the business has to take its natural path in the next few months to see how we are scaling. We are very keen on looking at, uh, at, at, at how you're contribution margins go as as time progresses, how your unit economics function, what your levers of growth are. I think these are some things which we are discovering, but we would want to, let's say, answer these questions uh, as we go with the capital we've raised and not just be a burn machine. Okay, and you know, what? Are, what's your outlook in terms of EdTech companies as a whole because it was sort of a dream run if you will in the year 2021 and then you did have you know a sort of reality check that took place uh, this year to a certain extent with what happened with uh, Baiju's. Um, how are you looking at the overall funding within the EdTech space? Are you, do you think that now perception is, is changing that things are certainly picking up? For sure. I think there is, at least in terms of, let's say, the conversations I've had with people or, let's say, the so-called, uh, what do we say, the big names in the industry, the people who lead capital, I think the conversation has changed from sheer hyper growth to, let's say, uh, profitability, sheer uh, numbers and growth to, let's say, more sustainable ways to grow. And I think that's a great uh, change. It's, it's a welcome change, to be honest, because uh, you're not just relying on capital to be the ones which put you or put you in or out of business. So I think the value moving slightly towards outcomes, slightly towards sustainability is a welcome change for a few players like us. And uh, sure, I think, I think capital is way more cautious when it comes to uh, times like this, but that also gives opportunity for, for, for businesses like ours to find better ways to scale. Uh, so I think I would say, all in all, I think it's an interesting space to be because it is challenged not just by the capital to you run to, but the amount of creative solutions you bring bring forth and what value you add to individual. Are you capturing a meaningful market? So uh, very excited in that sense. Would not really say uh, there is a slowdown. I think there is consolidation. There is consolidation from uh, multiple uh, directions, but at the same time, I think the righteous proper business model, which actually uh, goes back to its basics, looks at gross margins, looks at unit economics consistently as they scale, keeping sustainability, sustainability at the center will thrive. And that's similar to the success stories of, of, of the physics walas or the bunch of other tech companies which have done really well this year as well. So just walk us through what the game plan is for Banzu's down the line. What is it that you're looking to 
Uh, Chan, by way of financials, how are you looking at, uh, you know, upping your overall um, uh, subscriber edition and uh, what's the long-term game plan? So, um, we have started out in a fairly, uh, fairly different space when it comes to math education where we do not directly go teach what happens in a CBSC classroom, what happens in an ICSC classroom. We actually go ahead and, and we have introduced conceptual learning, cognitive ability development through mathematics being the central goal to, to, through which we have pushed our expansion in India, in Middle East and Southeast Asia. Changing and creating a behavioral change in terms of parents who are subscribing to coursewares just to get traditional marks versus a, a possible courseware which can set up their child for eventual success and develop them cognitively and, and build their STEM skill sets. I think that's a narrative change. That narrative change over the next year, we would want to percolate into tier two, tier three cities in India. Currently, we have the majority of our subscribers base, subscriber base from tier one and tier two cities. I think that's by uh, diversifying our, uh, our offerings, diversifying the way in which we conduct these offerings. And uh, as I would say, we have neatly cut through three sections which are mutually exclusive in the edtech uh, math sector, which is adhering to school outcomes, showing growth, which is making children uh, quicker and better at mathematics and in, in turn building confidence for questioning the very fundamentals of how mathematics is learned and applying math in the world around them. Building across these three, we see ourselves becoming a, a market leader in mathematics education in India and globally because uh, they're very big global players when it comes to math education in the United States. And that's what Banzo's uh, goal would be, which is to actually become the largest math education company in the world. And that means not just in India, not just in Indian diaspora across Middle East and Southeast Asia, but be that global brand. Because if India is worthy of exporting any edtech business at a global scale to people across diasporas, people across different geographies and cultures, I think it is mathematics because Indians have done that phenomenally well in the past. So we believe that we can consolidate that and be a global player in the times to come. And hopefully in the next three to four years, become the valid uh, math tech player, which has grown big beyond school curriculum. Fair enough. Thanks much for taking time out and joining in and all the very best for the company. Thanks a lot.